because I would like to happily introduce to you Carol Walker. Carol Walker is the CEO of Hermes, Hermes Europe. And actually, it's the first time you've been to Berlin and to this convention, isn't it? Yeah, that's correct. It's my first visit to the BBL. And actually, I just arrived one hour ago, that's and right. I will come straight to the red sofa. So it's a, a privilege to be here and have a, a personal conversation with you before I see the rest of the Congress. You're based in London, actually. And uh, what, what is the, uh, your first impression, the difference between London and Berlin from the people and... Wow, that's a good question. Um, I mean, Berlin is a very dynamic city. It, it feels very young. Um, London has some of those attributes as well. Um, yeah, London has some of those same attributes. It's also very metropolitan. It's very dynamic. So they're both fantastic cities. I love spending time in both. I actually had a weekend here with my husband earlier in the year after we'd had a, a conference here with the Otto Group. Yeah. Wonderful. But, but coming back to business, I mean, London is a business city. Berlin as well, and uh, coming to your business, to, to the express service business, uh, Berlin is, is to us, or to me, actually something like a testing ground. Is it also a testing ground for Hermes as well, for, for, for example, regarding a joint uh, parcel city hubs over here in the north of Berlin? Yes, it certainly is. So uh, Berlin also happens to be the headquarters of our Liefery same day and extra late next day delivery business. And so it's natural that we would do our main pilots of new innovative services here in, in Berlin. So we're testing ever shorter time windows. We're testing, for example, uh, very short notice diversions. If the customer's not at home, they can choose to have their parcel delivered somewhere else. Uh, we're testing cargo bikes, uh, emission-free vehicles. In fact, we'll go emission-free with Leafree here in Berlin in the third quarter of 2018. Um, and also set testing same-day returns. And then also for um, the main Hermes Group business here in Germany, we are part of the Komodo pilot, and therefore we're testing electric bikes and cargo bikes out of a shared micro hub within the city of Berlin, and really getting a feel for how to try and reduce the traffic chaos, uh, reduce the emissions, and play our part in sustainable logistics here in the capital. Okay, actually, yesterday night I had an encounter with some, some Berlin uh, bicycle driver, and you know, It's quite tough over here uh, when you're a uh, pedestrian and uh, are confronted with some bicycle drivers. I suppose it's the same in London, isn't it? Uh. Yes, it is. And, and with other innovations like the, uh, the on-the-ground robots that we've also tested with, with Starship Technologies, you're getting an increasing use of pavement space. And who knows, we might have to consider at some point having one side of the pavement for... Uh, deliveries and drones and, and robots and one side for pedestrians who just want to be on their mobile phone and go about their own business and not be too distracted by people doing uh, their regular work. So it's, it's interesting to imagine how it could become. What you're describing actually is a, it's a dig digital world. And coming back to the motto of this co uh, convention, the digital world, world uh, combined with the world of the reality. Um, what is actually... Um, Uh, the, the point of view in, in your business. Uh, I mean, your business is qu quite digital these times, but there are some parts actually where, where st you still rely on paper, paperwork, for example. Are you going to change this within the next years? Or do you think that, that people in the business are quite hesitant to do that? Well, we, are, we have focused at first on our interactions with our end customers and making those digital because that's what today's customer is expecting. And so we now have your, uh, the typical notifications of delivery that would be digital. We are giving customers choice over alternatives for their delivery. Um, and we're also just interacting with our customers and making it easy to be a great driver. So we're putting digital technologies into the last mile, into tour planning, We're asking customers their alternatives and then we're passing that information real-time onto the driver so that they have a better chance of a higher first-time success rate. So these are the two areas we've naturally chosen to focus on to accelerate our digital solutions. Um, and for example, with the, with the improved tour planning, we've seen already a reduction by one-third in the number of customer complaints. And we're seeing efficiency improvements of up to 11% in the final mile, all of which help provide a better service and a better first-time delivery success rate. Well, this is actually a, 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 a whole bunch of services. Are they not quite expensive? 
And what about the prices? I mean, you're now delivering it for free in that sense. Uh, um, are you actually planning to increase prices? And what about the customers? Will they accept this, especially in Germany? Yeah, it's a real conundrum, I think, here for the German market because more than any European country, customers expect their deliveries to home for free. 83% of customers in recent surveys have said that's what they expect. And yet, in practice, 60% are not at home. And therefore, they put it in the hands of the service provider to find alternatives. Um, and yes, there are significant cost pressures. We have put tens of millions of investment into our final mile in this year alone, into increasing driver pay, into improving the technology. And it is necessary that the industry, the retailers, the customers take their share to make sure there is a fair price for the delivery services that are being provided. It does cost money to provide a fantastic delivery service. And we have to make sure that that is fair to the industry. So we were actually the first to increase prices uh, earlier this year across the industry and this will not be a one-off, this will be something that happens every year uh, in the medium term. In terms of the final mile, you just said it, uh, Germany is quite different to other European countries. Are there any other services uh, uh, which are specific for Germany and uh, which are not actually offered in other countries like the UK? or northern countries or Benelux? I think there are different popularities of the same services in the main. So delivery to home, as I've said, is the most popular for Germany, more so than any other market. Um, there is the highest rate of returns in Germany compared to any other European country. And I think that's partly because it's a very established market. Uh, and there is a good level of satisfaction with e-commerce and therefore customers are comfortable to order and return. So yeah, it's 51% is the returns rate in Germany. And if you compare that to just 43% in the UK and somewhere like Poland, which is a, a more emerging market, it's just 29%. And therefore it's really important that we provide great options for return services for our customers as well as delivery services. Yeah. Thank you so much. I mean, tomorrow you will go and to have um, actually a speech over here. Would you like to tell us what you're talking about tomorrow? Yes, thank you for giving me the opportunity to plug my session tomorrow. So I'm very happy to be speaking at 12.30 tomorrow. And my topic will be on why customer focus is key in the development of urban logistics. So customer focus is the core issue you're going to think about in the next, next few months, years, whatever. Absolutely. It's what keep me, keeps me awake at night and what attracts my greatest interest what keeps and our investment. So, yes. The red sofa is also uh, a place where we talk uh, very p personal things, actually. Oh. Um, yes, and my last question is about uh, uh, what actually um, um, b binded you to this, to this uh, business. What is actually the fascination about express services, uh, uh, customer centricity, as you uh, just explained? I'm, I'm 30 years in the logistics industry, so I, I do find parcels incredibly sexy. And I hope that's shared with a lot of people here, but I imagine outside of this, this hotel and this forum, people wouldn't understand why on earth I feel that. I think it's something to do with just being a good operations business, but it's also needing to now become a strong customer-focused business and also technology business. So we're having to be all things to all people. And it's growing phenomenally, which makes it very exciting. No two days are ever the same, and it's literally 24-7, so you're always on your toes. Okay, thank you so much. And this is the first time somebody said it's a sexy business. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much, Mrs. Walker, and uh, thank you so much to the audience listening to us. Ich switch wieder auf Deutsch und uh, möchte mich nochmal bei allen DVZ-Fans bedanken. Wie gesagt, morgen beim Kongress wird Frau Walker einen Vortrag halten. Und uh, wir werden sie sicherlich noch mal in den nächsten Monaten wiedersehen. Well, actually, will, we, will you be uh, in Munich na, uh, next year on the transport logistic? Uh, I will do my best to be there, especially because if we're then, going to have another chat on the red sofa. Yeah, yes, yes. I, I'm, I'm now actually into, um, would like to invite you for that occasion, because uh, I, I think you feel quite familiar and and uh, comfortable on this uh, road sofa. I'm, yeah? I'm really quite settled on your comfy sofa, so yes, I'd be happy to join you in Munich next year. Well, I look forward I to it. I promise that we will actually do a bit more cushions in, in here. So, thank you a lot and bye-bye. <laughs>